Hey guys, Lady Lee here from LadyLee'sHome.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a super super easy goat cheese. I'm going to be processing my goat milk. Um, today I'm going to do two quarts because this is what I have to process into cheese right now to preserve. You can uh, make this recipe with cow's milk as well um, and you can process as many quarts as you want and I'll just show you just a simple way to adjust this recipe so whatever you have available if you have one quart if you have three if you have four it does not have to be a certain number you can process just as much as you have it's a very very simple cheese to make and it really is my go-to um, quick cheese just to make sure my milk is, doesn't spoil and I keep it fresh um, I love this cheese too because I can freeze it so if I have a lot of milk and I want to process it into cheese I can throw this cheese in the freezer and it will last for a very long time before we start if you're watching uh, this video on YouTube please subscribe to my channel and like and leave me a comment below if you watch it on social media I would love it if you head over to YouTube and um, subscribe to my channel over there also like this video and um, watch until the end and I would love to know your thoughts do you think it's easy enough do you think it's something you can try and if you did try or you are going to try um, I would love to know how it turned out so that's what we're gonna do right now and let's get started so we're gonna start by heating the milk but before we're doing that let me just give you the backstory here um, I love making cheese I love making all kind of cheese and just experimenting and trying different things but I own a few cheese making books and have, I have never seen this recipe in any of them I found this recipe or learned this recipe from a lady in Israel so most of you probably already know that I'm from Israel and I go a few times a year to visit my family um, uh, one, in one of my visits a few years ago I went to visit a goat herder I hope that's how you say it um, and yes there are still people who herd goats uh, for a living in the world it's pretty fascinating and it's amazing um, I went to visit that family uh, that lives in the mountains in the north end of Israel and this uh, man has uh, about maybe 120 goats the herd is all living together uh, bucks and does all mixed up there's always new babies and the milk is always flowing he gets up in the morning he milks whatever goats he needs to milk before he takes all his herd up to the mountains he walks for a couple of hours with them and then he just sits down somewhere and let them graze and then he gets up and walk a couple more hours and this is how they just go about their day for eight to ten hours every day until he comes back there's no hay bales or anything like that the ghosts just eat whatever is over there in the mountains this man is handing his wife a big bucket of about 20 gallons of milk every morning and it's her job to process it into cheese because the next morning they're going to be another 20 gallon and something has to happen with this milk so I was fascinated with his work but I also was really fascinated with her work and she was really really kind to show me what happened to that big bucket of milk every morning so with half of it she makes um, raw goat milk yogurt which is the most amazing thing ever and if you never tried yogurt made with raw goat milk you must um, I don't have that recipe on the blog but I will have it soon the other half of the milk is going into making this cheese which is super easy and she can make it in about an hour and she goes on with her day you know it does not consume these 20 gallons of milk does not consume her whole day um, so maybe it's somewhere in some kind of cheese making books but um, I'm bringing you this recipe authentically from the hills of Israel 
and I hope you appreciate that. I, I love I love learning from people and I love just you know preserving these little nuggets of old culture. All right, so here's what we need. We need a stainless steel pot that will hold the amount of milk that you want to process. It's better if it's got a heavy bottom. And when we put it on the stove top, we're going to turn the heat to about medium so we don't scorch the, scorch the milk. Okay, so that's really important. It's got to have a lid too because we're going to close it and let it coagulate. Um, I am going to walk you through all the steps here, but just so you know, I will link to the blog post for this recipe. Um, and you can go and visit the step-by-step -step picture tutorial if you need it a little slower and you can print it out too if you want. So the first thing we're going to do, and that is because our milk is cold. This milk was in the refrigerator and it's cold. Um, that lady that I was talking to you, uh, telling you about, she gets the milk when it's fresh right from the goats and sometimes it's still in the temperature that she needs it so she does not always need to even heat it before. We want to heat the milk to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? It's not hot, um, not hot at all, but just a little warm. So this, again, this milk was in the refrigerator, so I'm gonna have to heat it up a little bit. And I assume that your milk is probably also is stored in the refrigerator, but if you come home in the morning after milking the goat or the cow with fresh milk that is still warm, um, just make sure to check the temperature and make sure that it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, I'm gonna put it on the stove top and heat it up. And when it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and I do need to steer it to make sure that it's all the same temperature, okay? Um, when it is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll bring it here and I'll show you the next step. My milk is nice and warm at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And now what I'm going to do is add one drop of rennet per one part of milk to a one fourth cup of cool water, okay? So I need two drops because I, process, I am processing two quarts, but that's how easy it is to adjust this recipe. If you are processing three quarts, then just do three drops of rennet into fourth cup of water. If you are processing four quarts, then just do four um, drops of rennet into a one fourth cup of cool water. You are just adjusting the rennet, not, not the cups, not the uh, one fourth cup of water. Now my rennet is a little bit old, so just to make sure that I'm on the safe side here, I'm gonna add a little, one more drop. And if your rennet is a little old, then you can do that and it's fine. What I wanna do is add this to the milk and steer right away. So I'm just steering it in. And that is it. I'm going to I'm going to cover the pot and I'm gonna let it rest for about one hour undisturbed. So that's all we gotta do right now. I'll be back here in about an hour and show you how it looks. So my milk has been sitting for about an hour. I left it just a little bit longer than an hour again because my rennet is a little old. Um, but if your rennet is good, it should be about an hour. And you can check if it is coagulated well by just inserting a knife or um, I'm using um, icing spatula. It's, uh, it makes for a really good curd, curd uh, knife. Okay, so once it is coagulated like this, I'm going to go ahead and cut the curds. And I'm cutting this way and then this way to make squares. And then I'll put my icing spatula on a diagonal and cut the curds this way. 
I am going to let cover the pot again and let this sit for five more minutes um, to kind of separate the curds from the whey a little more before we move on to the next step. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. I put the um, pot on the stove top and I turn the heat to about medium. I am going to start and heat the curds until they are so sticky that they stick to each other. And you'll see in a minute how it looks. Now I also made sure that I have a slotted spoon with me because some pieces of the curds will stay in the way and I'll kind of uh, use the slotted spoon to help me fish them out. I also put a, a cheese mold close by on a plate to catch the whey. And I hope, I think this size will be good. I'll link below to the molds. Um, I bought this nice kit that is uh, consisting of two. I have this one of a uh, few of them, not just two, but a few molds like that. Um, I have this one close by just in case this one is too big. I can't remember exactly which one I use. Okay, so, and then the most important part are kitchen gloves and I use these only for cheese. I'm gonna put the slotted spoon aside and really I'm gonna work with my hands here. And it can get really hot in there before all the curds um, stick to each other. So I'm using these kitchen gloves and of course again, I'm not using them to clean my kitchen with, these are just for cheese making to protect my skin from the heat. I'm just gonna keep working the curds, kind of uh, moving them around and try to bring them together. And you can see right now that they're not really sticking. They're just moving all over the place. But once the whey starts to heat and comes to a certain temperature, they're gonna start sticking and we'll get a big ball of cheese here. So I'm just going to keep on going. This can take like, you know, five, seven, ten minutes, depending on how much milk you process and the temperature on your stove top. Again, I'm about medium heat here and it's kind of already starting to come together kind of like working clay, but just much more gentle. Just bring it together. I also make sure to move it around so the curds heat um, evenly as much as possible. And you can already see that they are sticking together. I love this part. <laughs> I love seeing it coming together into a ball of cheese. At some point, I will just go into like one part of the pot and kind of push it into one area and try to fish all of the curds and stick it to the big bowl. Okay, so see our ball of cheese, isn't it beautiful? I'm gonna keep it in the hot way for just a little longer to make sure it is firm enough. I don't want it to fall apart when I take it out. And you can see that if I keep on heating it, it becomes more solid and keeps its shape a little better. I think we're good here. And I actually think that I'm gonna use the smaller mold. So I'm gonna 
switch this one with this one. Give it another minute. You want to kind of press it to make sure there are no pockets of whey in there and that it's all just a solid bowl of cheese. Yeah, I think we're good. So I'll use this solid spoon just to see if I can fish anymore. I think I collected them pretty well. And if I do find a little more curds, I'll just stick them into the bowl. All right, so from here, I'm going to turn the heat off and I am pla placing this bowl of cheese that we have into the mold, pressing it down and we are almost done. The only thing, the only other thing that we have to do is salt this. So let me move back to the counter and I'll show you how I salt it. So pretty simple, right you guys? Um, we have this beautiful block of cheese here. The only thing that is left for us to do is to salt it. Now you got to make sure that you are using non-iodized salt. So it can be kosher salt, it can be sea salt, or it can be cheese salt. If you use just the regular table salt that is iodized, it will make your cheese green, which is not very appetizing. I do not really measure. I think on the blog at the in the um, recipe I put the measurements, but honestly, I do not really measure how much salt I put. I just kind of cover it all with salt. And if it ends up being too salty for me, I can you can wash it. If it's too salty for you, you can literally wash the cheese in cold water and um, it will get rid of the salt. So I'm putting it back in the mold. The salt will help more whey come out and kind of dry the cheese a little better. And that's why I need this plate here, okay? I am going to wash my hands one second. So this cheese will really be ready to eat tomorrow, but like every cheese, it's better if it has a little bit of time to cure. So I will probably leave it in the refrigerator for maybe two to three days before I use it. And what I can do if I don't want to use it right away is again, um, wrap it in um, plastic wrap and just throw it in the freezer and whenever I do want to use it I just take it out and thaw it. I kind of um, think about this cheese and and treat it just like I would feta cheese and um, it's salty it's got a little bit of a different texture than feta cheese but it is great for the same kind of uses so if you want to throw um, uh, throw it on salads make a sandwich, a toast with it, just eat it as a snack with some vegetables. If you want to cut the bread out, that's good too. What I'm going to do now, let me just empty this in the sink. I am going to cover the plate and it's actually probably even better if I use the bowl here because um, whey is going to come out and kind of fill the plate and if you use a bowl it's probably going to hold the whey a little better but that will do too. I'm going to just cover it like this with plastic wrap and I am going to put it in my refrigerator. Tomorrow I'll come by, open the plastic wrap and empty the whey that is on the plate and in a couple of days this cheese is going to be ready
to eat. And that's all there is to it. This took us maybe an hour and 10 minutes. And from that, about an hour, we didn't do anything. We just waited for the milk to coagulate. That's how simple this cheese is. And I hope that the heating and kneading part didn't scare you too much. I kept the camera on for the whole time, so I didn't cut anything. You saw it, it just took a few minutes. It's really not that hard. Um, and that's, that's all there is to it. It's a simple, salty cheese um, with great texture that is really simple to make. I hope you like this video. Again, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out the blog post, print the recipe, make it, and then come back and tell me what you think, how was the process, and if you like the taste. Um, that's it, I will see you in the next video.